Amen. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And appreciate you being here on this chilly but beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. Another opportunity to worship the Lord. That being said, if you are a visitor this morning, Pastor Snow would like to meet you. And it'll be right through these doors over here immediately following the altar service. And uh, he'd just like to visit with you and get to know you a little bit. Amen. It's so good to see each and every one of you. We had a wonderful ladies' fellowship yesterday. Yes, Sister Snow did a great job, and so many ladies putting that together. And if you weren't able to come, we missed you. And we had a great time connecting with ladies. Um, also, contribution statements are available. If you have made online contributions, those statements are available uh, via email. Please see the First Lady, Sister Snow, if you have an error or need an update and address. Amen. Also, tonight, the youth will be leading the service. and Brother Preston uh, Marino will be preaching to us. We're just looking forward to what God has for us. Don't you appreciate our young people? Amen. Amen. Just come expecting, amen, that God will use them tonight. Amen. The recreation night, that's this Tuesday, or yes, this Tuesday, January 30th. Time is 6.30. It's at the Lake Dallas High School Gymnasium. That's a wonderful time to have fun, burn some calories, connect with people, and uh, we're thankful <laughs> for that connection. Also, Brother Danny Sweeney will be ministering Wednesday, January 31st. You're going to be blessed. They are a wonderful family, and I know they're not a stranger to Faith Tab. The Overcomers Choir will be ministering on February 4th in the evening service. We are thankful for OBI and their ministry as well. And then on Tuesday, February the 6th at 7 p.m., the prime timers are going to have a potluck. They always have a great time. And uh, so we want you to invite you if you're in that prime timers bracket. Amen. Come and be a part of that. And uh, bring a prime timer with you. Amen. And then also we got youth retreat coming up. Amen. Any of our young people excited about youth retreat? Well, I don't know that I heard any young people excited about it. I heard some parents excited about shipping their young people off for a couple of days. Amen. But that's February 29th through March the 2nd. There are forms out in the foyer, and the deadline to sign up for that is February the 18th. We are just expecting God to meet with our young people and uh, that God will uh, work in their lives. And some great things have taken place at youth retreat and our young people. God has changed lives at young people and uh, at youth retreat. We're expecting God to do the same then. And uh, if you know a young person that's interested in that, that is $50 a person. Okay, so we want you to sign up for that, young people, and just expecting God to work and move. Amen. There's a lot of things going on at Faith Tabernacle. Amen. It's exciting. Some of the things that are coming up, so put those things on your calendar. Why don't you stand with us and let's invite the presence of the Lord this morning. God is here to meet with. Did you know that God wants to meet with you this morning? Amen. Amen. How many of you want God to talk to you this morning? Amen. So before we go any further in this service, why don't we lift our hands and invite the presence of the Lord this morning into this service. And let's just invite God to have his way. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity. Lord, to be in your house this morning, God, knowing that you have a plan and you have a purpose. God, we pray that you would meet with us Hallelujah. tonight, this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor. I'm glad to see you this morning. You sure look good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Before Brother Brooks comes to lead us in worship, I want Brother Johnson to testify. You can be seated if you'd like to. I just want you to shout amen and worship the Lord today. Praise God. Psalmist David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We had a wonderful day yesterday. I had the privilege of preaching to the ladies for a little bit at the ladies fellowship. Had a great time of prayer. And I'm believing God for great things. I said, I'm believing God for great things. Praise the Lord. A year ago today, about this time, I arrived at the hospital. They said I had 10 minutes to live. But you prayed, 
and God took my case. Sister Brianna came and sang to me. Sister Donna Ricks came and brought me a paper. I'm not sure she'd even read it. When she left, I read it, and it said, I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. I'm taking care of you. I'm here by the grace of God. time to just stand and give him more praise. Hallelujah. Is he worthy? Glory to his name. Hallelujah. What a faithful God. Hallelujah. Oh, praises to your name. Holy, holy, let every tongue
in you. Lord, I trust in you. Yes, I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. Oh, Lord, I believe. I believe you're my portion. And I believe you are more than enough. you're all I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My all in all. My everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We look to you today, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
before the choir comes to minister, lift both hands in the hip, into the heavens and give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's victory. There's victory through you this morning. Hallelujah. Bigger than every problem, bigger than every fear. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you. We bless your name. Glory to God. God bless you.
The day you saved me, the day I heard you call out my name. You said you loved me, you said you'd never leave me, and I Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to just go ahead and give him praise this morning. I said somebody needs to just go ahead and give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Zechariah 4 1, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. I have a praise report today about Aiden. He has struggled in school with severe behavior issues. All the time, God was asking me, Do you trust me? But I continued to see different doctors, tried different prescriptions, it only caused side effects. While all the time praying for an answer, nothing was working until I decided to trust God. And then a friend told me about a natural supplement that has been very effective for helping children with ADHD. After just a few days of being on them, this, his teacher started seeing changes in him. Aiden began having more and more fantastic days and amazing days. And the teacher texted me one day and told me, Aiden is making a comeback. And I give God all the glory for everything that he is doing and continues to do. Praise God.
I heard you call out my name. You said you loved me. You said you'd never ever leave me. Oh, and I
The day you saved me, the day I heard you call out my name, you said you loved me, you never leave me. faithfulness we know that you are the same yesterday today and forever I believe in you Lord to minister and move in this house right now for your glory for your glory Lord for your glory for your glory touch every heart and every life minister to every need that is represented granted in the name of the Lord in the name of the Lord I pray for Sister Lavinia Sprayberry this morning, Lord. Come down to that hospital room. Minister and touch it right now for the glory of God. You sent your word and you healed them. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. I believe in you, Lord, to touch her today. Thank you for what you've already done and for what you're going to do. Grant it now in the name of Jesus that you would be glorified for your glory, for your glory. Touch Sister Ruth Flores today. Minister, Lord, for the glory of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want you to open up your mouth now and thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let your neighbor hear you. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I've been blessed. I, I've got a testimony. I praise you. I bless your name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. We praise you, Lord, and we bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, choir, for your help this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, I have seen thy heartache. I have seen thy pain. And if thou wilt call on me, I will answer thee. I will show thee great and mighty things. My arm is not too short. I am the I am. 
I'm your need maker. I am your need provider. I am the one that is in control. I am here this morning. If you will call on me, I will answer you. I will provide for you. I will bring healing for you. I am your sustainer. Call on me today and find me true, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. We are blessed. Turn to your neighbor, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. All my life, the Lord's been good to me. We'll dismiss the children to Children's Church at this time. I believe next Sunday they're going to have a surprise for us. Is that true, Brother Brad? Is that next Sunday? The week after? Okay. Two weeks. They're going to have a surprise for us. You don't want to miss that. God's helping us doing some great things. We are thankful. Hallelujah. Wonderful testimony about Aiden. Hallelujah. The goodness and the grace of the Lord. How God has touched us. When Sister Debbie told me, she was rejoicing and thanking God and testifying. And she said these words. She said, the uh, teacher has said, Aiden is making a comeback. I said, that ought to be confirmation to you right there that she would use those words. Because just a few days before, we had been in prayer. Amen. We won't pray for Brother Baker this morning. The Lord had touched Brother Baker. Let's pray the Lord had touched Brother Baker. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Asking you to touch Brother Baker this morning. You sent your word and you healed them. Minister your strength and your help. Touch this morning for the glory of God. For the glory of God is a testimony, Lord, of your faithfulness and your grace and your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ushers, come. Let's worship the Lord this morning in our giving. Hallelujah. It's a testimony of the faithfulness and the goodness and the grace of God. Hallelujah. God's in control. God's helping us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God's faithful. I said God's faithful. We serve an on time. God knows exactly where we're at, what we're facing. He's in control. He's in control. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you this morning for your goodness and your grace. We're believing you, Lord, to help us. Our help cometh from you. Minister and move, blessing this offering.
Bless the gift, and the giver and will be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, musicians, for your help. Praise the Lord. Brother Sims is away visiting his grandchild this weekend. Praise the Lord. And uh, several that are in different locations, several that are not feeling well and under the weather, we want to pray for them. Look around you and see somebody that's not here. Reach out to them. Let them know we missed you being here today. Okay, you don't have to, I don't guess, if you don't want to. But uh, it would be good if you would. Uh, praise the Lord. Sister Lavinia Sprayberry has been in and out of the hospital and back and forth at Good Samaritan. And uh, they're not sure exactly what all has went on. Uh, she is uh, making some recovery. And we thank the Lord for that, but we won't, I'm going to believe the Lord for a complete healing touch. Uh, we was visiting her. I got uh, tickled, brother, um, several of the brothers. There's, there's five of us that do the visitation. We've got a little text team that's just Brother Johnson, Brother Kirkland, uh, Brother Preston, Brother Dathan, and myself, so I'll just, you know, so we try to keep updated, so all five of us in there on the same time, and uh, so I text them, and they said, well, uh, you know, she was sleeping, she didn't respond, and and then one, well, she'd kind of been out of it today, and so I, I, it was so great, I got to text them, I said, well, she stood up when I came in, was talking to me, and uh, of course, I didn't tell them that physical therapy had come by to get her up. But uh, uh, I won't tell you what Brother Dathan told me. He said, well, you can go visit them all the time then if they're going to act like that. No, I, we just had a, uh, but the Lord has helped us, and we're, we're thankful. We're thankful. And we've got several, uh, while I was there, even on that same floor, several that have been praying for and individuals that uh, are reaching out to God. It's good to see Brother Tony in the house of the Lord. This morning, how the Lord has touched him and helped him. Amen. Go ahead. Give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You doing okay, Brother Baker? All right. All right. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to believe the Lord to continue to help us and touch us. I am convinced with everything in me that we are moving toward revival in a great way. Y'all didn't, didn't hear me. You didn't help me. I don't know. But uh, today, Tony and uh, Sister Carol have a birthday. Both of them have a birthday today. And so we, yeah, praise the Lord. Happy birthday. And uh, we, are, we are excited. Now, this morning, this morning, uh, 
I didn't didn't mean for it to become a four part series, but this is part number three. So, and next Sunday morning will be the finishing. That's where we've been trying to get to. So you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss uh, where we've been trying to get to on a gully washer, because we've been looking for the rain. We've been praying for the rain. We've been praying for the blessings, but there's some things that precede the blessings. And God, God so, so strongly spoke to my heart about these areas. And so I want to follow him. I have to follow him. And so this morning we're going to uh, do part three. Now, if you missed part one and part two, I'll give you just a brief rundown to get you caught up. But 1 Kings chapter 18, if you'd stand with us for the reading of the word of God. 1 Kings chapter 18. It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. They was in a drought. How many knows we're in a drought? How many knows we're in a drought? And Elijah went to show himself to Ahab, and there was sore famine. And uh, so he comes, and Obadiah says, uh, all these things, I go tell him, and you're not there. Then I'll get in trouble, and I'll lose my head. And I've got a hundred that uh, in two different caves that uh, uh, that I'm feeding. And uh, you know, I'm a man of God. We can't find them later, but anyway, Obadiah said this there. And Elijah said, "As the Lord liveth, I'll be there. You just go tell Ahab, and I'll meet him." So Ahab says, "Okay, everybody, meet on the top of Mount Carmel. Everybody." Everybody called all of Israel. So he calls all of Israel. And Elijah said in verse 21, How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They couldn't say anything because they knew they was guilty. So he said, You take, you you false prophets, 450 false prophets of Baal, uh, 400 prophets of the groves. He said, Y'all go over there and do your thing. So they went over there and they cut their bullock. They took the bullock, verse 26. They dressed it and called on the name of Baal. So they started at 9 o'clock and they prayed until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, danced and cut themselves. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near, verse 30. All the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. We're, we're, We're seeking rain. We're seeking the blessings of the Lord. Elijah took 12 stones according to the numbers of the tribes of sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a trench round about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and he cut the bullock in pieces and laid him in order and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on burnt sacrifice it on the wood and he said do it a second time and they did it a second time and he said do it a third time and they did it a third time and the water ran about the altar and filled the trench also with the water and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said Lord God of Abraham Isaac and Israel let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. A comeback. Come on, somebody say a comeback. Then, somebody say then. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people, they saw it, they fell on their face. And they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elisha brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, this is where we're trying to been get this, where we've been trying to get to, get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance. Of rain. 
Father, we're moving toward the rain. We're moving toward the blessing. Father, we're hungry. We're dry in a thirsty land where no water is to see thy loving kindness, which is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I'm believing you, Lord, tonight to prepare us. I'm believing you, Lord, tonight to minister and move among us in this service this morning. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest upon every heart and every ear to hear. I pray, Lord, you'd quicken the heart of the backslider. Pray you'd quicken that one with that hidden thing. I pray that you would reveal to us by the power of the Holy Ghost that thing we're not even aware is there. I pray, Lord, that you'd minister and move in these altars and let the fire of God fall. It would, we would be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, so that we could be presentable to receive the rain. Grant it, Lord, for the glory of God, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen and amen. God bless you this morning as you're seated. Thank you for being here. Before I get started right quick, I just got to tell you, thank you for coming to pray. Notice before the services in the last few services, a lot of folks been coming early to pray. This morning, the ladies started gathering before the service. The men have been gathering for some time. You say, I see a few men now. I don't know if I can go up there. Well, if you can and you want to, we want you to come gather with us and pray. We want you to come. We, I know I know. it's just a few moments, but it, we're preparing our heart for the service and what God has for us. And I believe in this brand new year, the comeback, the first thing we got to do is come back to prayer. I believe in prayer. I said, I believe in prayer. You come way too late to tell me that it doesn't pay to pray. I said, I know what prayer can do. And I'm believing God, and I need God, and and the Lord is helping me. Uh, is anybody in here the Lord's been helping you? Anybody in here the Lord? You've been, you'll say, Pastor, I'll be honest. This year God stirred me up. And I've been a praying and I feel something turning in my spirit. Come on. Somebody help me in here. I, different ones has come, told me they're driving down the road or at home. And all of a sudden how the Lord has been helping them. A comeback, a year that come back, and a comeback to prayer and preparing for a gully washer, the blessing. Everybody wants the blessings. Everybody prays for the blessings. Lord, I'm in a famine. I need you to help me. Need you to help my family. Lord, I'd like I'd like a better job. Well, I'd like this. I'd like well, we want the blessings, we want the rain. But what we need to do is prepare our hearts so that God could get us in the place where we need to be so that the blessings can fall. Oh, I want the blessings to fall. 850 to 1, he's outnumbered. You can't find those hundred that was hid by Obadiah. Here he is on the mountain alone. And it is time that somebody stand up for the Lord. Said it's time for somebody to stand up for the Lord. Elijah is sick and tired of seeing the spiritual state of the land of Israel. And so somebody comes out of the prayer closet and he asks the people a question. How long are you going to play church? How long are you going to halt between two opinions? Taught her between Jehovah and Jezebel. For your profession is worthless until it lines up with your practice. Answer, the solution was for the fire to fall. And that devil danced around and shouted in the prophets of Baal for six hours. And we found out that the devil would have, if God would have allowed him to, he could have sent fire. But God said, not today, devil. I'm going to show myself strong. They danced. They cut themselves. And finally, Elijah said, that's enough. Come here. He gathered them together, and he rebuilt the altar that was broken down. He rebuilt the altar that was broken down. Do you remember a time when we used to pray? I remember a time when we used to pray in the church. My house shall be called a house of prayer. I tell you, friend, this morning, I'm hungry for us to come back to prayer. And he comes to prayer, and this is where I'm going to start right here, pick up where we left off. He comes to prayer in the name of the Lord. 
He didn't come in his own strength. He didn't say, I come to you as Elijah. But he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord with authority. And he made a trench round about the altar as would contain two measures of seed. What was he doing that for? You don't read that the prophets of Baal made a trench around their altar. Why did Elijah make a trench around? Because he was separating that altar to a holy God. He was separating it from the earth. He was saying, hey, look at here. This is a holy thing, and I'm going to make a trench where it is not touching anything. Oh, yes, it's on a foundation, but he built out of the 12 tribes of Israel. Notice that they had already split. There was Israel, and there was Judah. But he said, I'm not, and and right here he's replying, when when Elijah's preaching, help me, Lord, he is preaching to to a backslidden Israel under a wicked king, Ahab. Judah naturally and many times uh, with a lot of the Levites followed after God where Israel turned away. But he comes here and God sees no division. He said, I'm going to get all 12 tribes. I'm going to bring all 12. Even though there's only 10 that's represented here, my promises are good to whosoever will. They can come. And so he brings them all together. Notice, notice that he comes in the authority. I tell you, it would answer a lot of our questions about what we ought to do in life if we could ask, can I do this in the name of the Lord? Where we go is the Lord going to be honored. What I post is the Lord. Can I put in the name of the Lord? How I act, can I say I'm acting this way in the name of the Lord? Will the Lord be glorified with my action? Will the Lord be glorified with my thoughts? Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Why? Because I need the blessing of the Lord. I need the fire in my family. I need the power of God on my life. And I want the blessings of the rain. So I've got to do it the right way. I said I've got to do it the right way. Notice. Notice there was a great difference in both of these altars. There was two bullocks. Elijah said, you pick yours out. You choose one. You get whichever one you want. They picked one out. What did the Bible say? The Bible said they dressed it. And put it on the altar. What did the Bible say about Elijah? He put the wood. He put the 12 stones. He put the wood. He cut the bullock in pieces. See, there was a pattern that was given by God. You go back to Leviticus chapter 9. Whenever you took a sacrifice and you brought it to the Lord... You know what God required? God required that that sacrifice, that bull, that would be brought in as a sin offering, what did they do? The priest washed the legs because the legs was what was contaminated. The legs, what else did they wash? They washed the innards. God said, I want that. God said, I want the inside washed out. If you're going to bring... If you're going to bring a sacrifice to me, you've got to get that which touches the earth. You've got to get the inside right. You've got to get it clean. A clean heart, a a pure heart is what God... Listen, we are so good at cleaning up the outside when we've got all kinds of hidden things on the inside. But God said, I want to clean out the inside so that you can be a sacrifice that is acceptable. Now you see what's on the inside. Oh yeah, let me tell you something, buddy. We know that inside, it had to be washed. The head was placed at a certain position. Did you know that? There was a place for the fat 
on the offering. There was places that it was cut. He dressed it, he cut it in pieces and put it in the proper order. The prophets of Baal dressed it, threw it on there and called on Baal and nothing. There is a proper way to bring your life as a sacrifice before God. Little things. You know, God is interested in little things. He said it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. The work of the Lord is to be performed with great precision and reverence. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Jeremiah 48 and 10 said, Cursed be he that doeth the work of God deceitfully or negligently. Your name, when you come as a Christian, when your people, listen, when your neighborhood sees you and you tell them you go to church, don't tell them you're going to Faith Tabernacle unless you're going to line up with the word of God and live a life that will be pleasing to the Lord. Because they're watching for the sake of the people, for the sake of your soul. Church, we've got to get this right. Others are depending on us. That transfer separation, Baal's sacrifice versus the man of God's sacrifice. Then he said, fill four barrels with water. I've stood on that mountain. You look down, you can see the sea. Go get four barrels of water. They're craving rain. They go down to the sea, get water, haul it up there. One barrel, two barrel, three barrel, four. Do it again. Five barrel, six barrel, seven barrel, eight barrel. Do it one more time. How many stones do we have? Twelve. How many washing barrels do we have? Twelve. Because God wants everybody to be washed. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, we must be washed. We must be washed in the blood. We must be thoroughly cleansed. Cleansed. Now, I don't know if you've ever been camping, never been out and trying to build a fire with wet wood. Uh, we're saying the God that's going to answer by fire, let him be God. Are you ready? Let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. They've already been dancing for six hours. Now, we're going to call on the God of heaven to send fire. The first thing we're going to do is soak it with 12. But God said, I want it washed. I don't care how funny it may seem. Can I go ahead and preach to you? I don't care how odd it may look to your neighborhood. If God said, then that's what we got to do. I said, if God said for us to be washed, then we're going to be washed. He stood with a certainty. Brother, it's utterly impossible for the fire to burn that now. You're just heaping difficulties on top of it. But he was confident because the more unlikely the answer, the more glorified God would be when the fire fell. It doesn't seem right, brother. You just go ahead and obey God. Well, I don't think that's what we ought to do. But God said to do it. You go ahead and obey him. That just don't seem right to give 10%. I don't understand how 90% of income is more than 100%. But when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 90% is more than 100%.
How can that be? How can we ask the fire to fall when we're going to submerge it in water? Because God said so. When I came back in the late 1900s, the first year I sat down and looked over the finances, when it was over with, I said, my goodness, number one guy that was blessing and keeping the church alive, paying his tithe, didn't even come to church here. And that was long before we had cameras and the Internet. I went to him. I just felt like I ought to do two things. Number one, thank him. So I I took him to the the fish house over on university, called him, said, would you meet me for dinner? He said, yes, I will. Thank you. I said, I just want to thank you. You've been a great blessing to our church. But I said, as a pastor, I'm really concerned. I've never seen you in church. And I said, i got to let you know, I thank you for paying your tithe. But if... You stand before God, just paying your tithe isn't going to get you into heaven. And I want you to make heaven. He said, I really appreciate you having concern for my soul. Then he said, I'm not ready to come to church yet. But I found in my business that if I pay my tithe, that God honors my business My guys don't quit. My trucks don't break down. My machines. He said, it's cheaper for me. He was an unsaved man that had got a hold of a biblical principle and honored God with his tithe. Can I tell you later, he did get saved. He's in church this morning. Thank God. I want you to know God has given us some principles in his word for our lives, how to live, how to, what to do. And when you honor those, the rain comes. But until you get things in order, we cannot expect his blessing. Here he is. Elijah has confidence. How did he get that confidence? I got to hurry or we won't even get to part five. How did he get that confidence? Well, you need to go back to chapter 17. See, in the past, he was down by the brook Cherith, and God sent ravens. And God said, now I want you to leave here and go down to a woman at Zarephath, and there you're, she's going she's gonna to prepare a cake for you. And the Bible said that she made a little upper room, and that Elijah stayed there in that upper room. See, what had happened is the upper room had prepared... How oh, the upper room had prepared him for the confrontation on Mount Carmel. If we could get into the upper room, I said, if we could get into the upper room, hallelujah, that time was not wasted. Psalms 91 said, For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my strength, my refuge. My fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Holy boldness to standing and proclaiming in a crowd only comes from being prostrate before the throne in the closet. Elijah was calling for a comeback, a need for a gully washer to wash away the spirit of indifference, to turn the people back. And he says, Father, glorify thy name. And he said, let it be known this day that thou art God and I am thy servant. What is a servant? A servant is one whose will is entirely surrendered to another, who is yielded to their master. Do you realize what a privilege it is to pray? I said, do you realize what a privilege it is to pray? To have access to the throne room of God. Hallelujah. To stand in communion. To have fellowship with the God of all the earth. The creator of the universe. But if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I will be transgressed if I have transgression and rebellion. But if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask 
ask what you will. We've got to get things in order for the sacrifice to be received. The motives of his heart was not that Elijah would be glorified, but that God would be glorified. I don't want him to say, man, Brother Snow. I don't want him to say, man, what about Faith Tabernacle? I want him to say, look what God has done. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about him. When we get things in order, you can say, come near. Drawing near with a true heart, full of assurance and faith. Hebrews said their bodies washed with a pure water. James 5 and 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. One whose ways please the Lord. What's going on in your heart? How do you really feel? I'm preaching to you this morning. What's really there? Turn our heart back again. Away from the forbidden, back to the Father. Lord, would you turn our heart again? They prayed for six hours. Elijah prayed 63 words. It don't take God long when things get right. When you get the sacrifice right, when you repair the altar, when you get it washed with the Word of God, it don't take long for the fire to fall. When you get things right, oh, Lord, help us this morning to get things right so that we can receive the fire. Then, reach over and touch two people and tell them then. Then, oh, tell them like you mean it. Then. I can see little Jojo. He's been standing there. He's been writing in the dirt. He's got little rocks. He's been playing cars. He's been all kinds of things. While he's got sick and tired of watching the worldly church jump and dance and holler and nothing happened. But all of a sudden, the man of God steps up and he says, come here. He brings the water. He washes the sacrifice. There's water around the trench. It's full of water. Pray 63 words. Then. I mean, we've only been going at this for four days now here. Then. I remember going over there to Ross Perot's place where the airport is. A few years ago, went over there and sat there. I'm glad you're all here today. Get ready. Here comes the blue angels. I mean, all of a sudden, little Joe Joe's looking. Whoa. Here comes the fire. Then, where did it come from? An earthly fire starts at the bottom and burns up. But this is no earthly fire. It starts from heaven. It burns the sacrifice. It burns the wood. It burns the stones. I've been to the houses of people where their house burned. I've helped them as we cried and picked through the rubbish. The stones and the foundations were still there. But this fire licked up the dust, licked up the water. Everything that had been touched by the altar and had been washed was consumed with the fire. Why? 
Because God's fire is a supernatural fire. No wonder Jeremiah said it's like a fire shut up in my bones. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be wit. No wonder they left the upper room with boldness. Why? Because the fire fell from above. That innocent substitute, that bullock, Baal's bullock is still laying there. But Elijah's, who's been placed in order and washed, is completely consumed. Then the people fell on their face and cried, The Lord. You've been sitting out there for six hours watching the worldly church, and all of a sudden you see the supernatural take place and the fire fall. The Lord, maybe the Lord, he's God, I guess. I guess the Lord. No. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, we are unworthy. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. You got to remember, Ahab is right there. You got to remember the guy that persecuted him, his wife that had him killed, but they don't care anymore. They're crying out, The Lord, he is God. There's no God like Jehovah. Brother Johnson testified this morning, there's no God like Jehovah. No God. Who brought them through the Red Sea? Jehovah. Who overthrew Egypt? Jehovah. Who brought the fire? Jehovah. Who saved you when you were sin sick? I'm telling you, God did. Who brought you out when you was laying there crying yourself to sleep at night? You was contemplating suicide and wishing you'd never been born? Who brought you peace that the world knows not of? Jehovah, I come to tell you this morning, the Lord, He is God. Musicians, come and help me. Because now it's time to get out of business. Then, not two days later, these good words from our sponsor. Thank you. Oh, the fire phone. That's great. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. We're on the way to seeing the waters come. That's wonderful. We need rain. We want the blessings. Then, they had a new commander in chief. Ahab said, y'all get up there. They listened to Ahab, but when the fire fell, they quit listening to the worldly influence and started listening to the spiritual influence. That pastor, he don't know nothing. No wonder your children live the way they do when you go home and have the preacher for supper. No wonder when you make fun of the old-time way and everything else, he don't know what he's doing. I'm going to tell you right now, I just turned 59, my next one will be 60, and you come way too late, honey, to tell me I don't know what I'm doing. I've seen it. I know what I'm talking about. Am I perfect? No, I am not. But I've seen the goodness and the grace and the mercies of God. And I know that the Lord, He is God. And if you'll follow God, He'll do for you. He's no respecter of person. But get ready. Bump your neighbor and tell him, get ready. I, I couldn't hear you. Tell him, get ready. He said, now it's time to catch these 450 prophets of Baal. We're going to take them right down there to the river. Can you imagine Ahab? Did you, did you hear him, Ahab? Did you hear him? Catch him! 
and the people caught them all. Oh, no, we watched you. You just jigged your last jig, buddy. Oh, that sounds so bad. Oh, that just, that's just hard. Why would God do that? Because there is, see, that offering and that sacrifice wasn't for them because they'd already made up their mind who they was going to serve. The people was the ones that was in the valley of decision. The substitute, their sacrifice was accepted. But now they've got to catch the false prophets and kill them. Y'all ain't ready for this. Before the rain ever comes, the false prophets and the false priests, the greatest enemies of the people of God, who was not only destroying them, but destroying their own bodies and their own souls, had to be cut away. Can I tell you this morning, you need to come to the altar and cut away the bitterness. You need to remove the dagger out of the back of somebody you've put it into. You need to lay that backbiting, gossiping tongue on this altar. I think it's 16 foot. It's long enough to hold it. Just let, start on this end. And, lay, and if it's not, we'll butt two of them together. Put that thing on the altar. Get rid of the hurt. I'll tell you what, could they come by here? I'm going to share a piece of my mind. Don't do that. You ain't got enough of your mind to give away a piece. And God will not, I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care how much you shout. I don't care how much you proclaim. As long as you let those false idols rise up above the things in your life that God has for you, friend, I'm telling you, the fire will not fall. You need to cut out the worldliness. Those things you've been watching, you need to cut them out. You know what they are. Those lies of the enemy telling you you're not good enough. You hear me. I, I've been praying. I've been praying. I, believe it or not, I've been praying. And so I'm going to follow the Lord. Well, you don't know what they did. Honey, we don't know what all you did either, but we trust is under the blood. So go ahead and keep holding it over them. It's you that is getting the blessing stole from you. Forgive and move on. Forgive. There's up there singing. Why he was up there, there's up there doing this, there's up there marching around the altar. I know how they are, and we know how you are. But if you cut that, if you kill that old thing, God, woo, God will bring revival. You need to take it down to the brook and cut the head off of it. You need to get rid of that pride. You think you're all that in a cup of queso. No, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about Him. Pride is a spirit of rebellion, witchcraft. Lord, I need you to be glorified. Hatred, rebellion, compromise, insecurities, doubt, despondency. Before the gully washer, before the rain ever come. Oh, man. Can you imagine them? Carrying them down. I don't want to go. That's that. That ain't no don't care. Ahab said, I don't care what Ahab said. The man of God said, we're going to the brook Kishon right now. We're going down there right now. Now, kill him. Oh, please. <laughs> Killed him. And when number 450 hit the dirt, And they turned and looked at a they turned and looked at Ahab. They turned and looked at the man of God. 
the man of God. I, I, I know your imagination's not like mine. Imagine, as Elijah said, Ahab! Ahab's heart went, uh, they're going to kill me too. And he said, get up, get ready, for I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. You know what? God was giving Ahab a chance to repent. Hear me. Before the rain ever comes, before the rain ever fell, they had to get things right. They had to get the altar right. They had to get the sacrifice right. And they had to cut away those false prophets. How many wants revival? How many needs revival in your family? How many needs revival in your soul? How many is hungry? Say, Lord, I'm tired of just going through the motions. Church, let's get it right. Let's repair the altar that's been broken down. Let's get the sacrifice washed and clean this morning and pray, Lord, let the fire of God fall. You're here this morning and the enemy has lied to you. He's done his best to destroy the plans that God has for you. Listen to me. I, I don't care how bad it's been. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven who's the master at turning things around. It may seem impossible, and God's saying, wash it. How's the fire going to fall? I said, wash it. How's the fire going to fall? Wash it again. Wash it again. Twelve barrels. But man's impossibility was God's opportunity to show himself strong. Some are going to leave here and be a testimony of the goodness and the grace of God. Stand with me all over this place. You're hungry this morning. You're hungry this morning. I want you to join me in this altar right now and say, Lord, help me. Speak to me. Speak to me. Come on. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Some of you need to cut away some things. Cut away. Cut away.